Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. You're watching to us the origin in conversation with Sheikh Qadi Lutur Rahman, the Imam and Khatib of the famously known Mosque, Regent's Park Mosque. And our tonight's topic for discussion is the Holy Prophet and the elders. Um, in order for you, in order to discuss or if you want to participate or ask any question or if you have any suggestion or feedback, please feel free to email us, which will be appearing at the bottom of your screen shortly. For your convenience, it's towards the origin at chsuk.tv. Before we went into the break, we did you did uh, discuss and touch upon Hamil al-Qur'an, yep. the person who holds the Qur'an, who memorizes the Qur'an. Mm. Now, should it not be our responsibility also to make our society understand that what is the utmost importance of a person who memorizes the Qur'an? Because a lot of time we see people who memorize the Qur'an might actually not even understand what yeah. they are reading. Mm, yes. Now, how do we balance yeah, so it out? Obviously, we will have uh, weaknesses uh, because simply because many of us, we're not Arabs, our language is not Arabic, but yes, we are encouraged highly to understand the whole Quran and then also practice accordingly. Uh, but even then, if somebody who is fortunate enough to memorize the whole Quran, then he should be given the due respect. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, it is like respecting Allah the Almighty and honoring Allah the Almighty uh, you know, th honoring Allah the Almighty is through also honoring the people who memorize the Holy Quran. And I wanted to mention also the word that many of us we use, like, oh, we say the word mullah. Oh, mullah. Uh, we use the word like, uh, even when we're addressing Maulanas or Shaykhs. In a negative connotation. In, in a, in a negative connotation. Yeah. And that's very, very unfortunate. I have, I mean, when we travel sometimes, we even hear people are talking on airlines uh, about the about the religious people and the way they make comments. And, and, and to me, like, it's very sad because sometimes we may not be able to do certain things, but that doesn't give me the authority to talk against or look down upon somebody because we may even go out of Islam if, if we insult anybody, any religious individual. Knowledgeable. Uh, not, because religious individual may have mistakes, but because of his religiosity, because of, your, because of, his, of his deen, if we look down upon him, then this can have effect on our iman. I mean, there are a couple of things that we need to remember always. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, a religious person is also an insan. Exactly. I mean, we're not, not angels. We're not infallible. We, we all make mistakes. Even, uh, even uh, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he said, "Kullun yuqhad wa yuraddu illa sahibu hadha al qabr." Imam Malik was in Medina and Manawara, and he said, "Every one of us, we can be accepted and we can be discarded or rejected, except the sahib of hadha al qabr, except the owner of this grave, Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And even Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasallam, did he not say, "Wa ma ubarri wa nafsi inna nafsi la amaratun bi sur"? Yes. So. So, um, so again, we can make, as human beings, we make mistakes. But coming back to the discussion, honoring Allah, honoring an elderly person is, is like honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْجَافِي عَنْهُ إِكْرَامُ وَحَامِلِ الْقُرْآنِ غَيْرِ الْغَالِي And the, the, the person who memorized the Holy Quran and he doesn't exaggerate or he doesn't forget or he doesn't uh, he doesn't uh, he's respectful towards the Quran and dutiful towards the Holy Quran and also ikram this sultan a just ruler honoring and respecting a just ruler is also honoring like Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so these are the three important people mentioned in this hadith then also we find other traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which give us some clear ideas of how he uh, uh, treated the elderly people. If you remember last week we said that when Prophet Sallallahu used to hear children crying during the prayers, mm. he would make his prayer shorter. But listen to this hadith um, uh, that um, uh, in, the, on the, in the book of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah uh, an Abi Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu anna rajulan qala wallahi ya rasulallah inni la ata'akhar an salat al-ghada min ajli fulan so a man came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said o prophet of allah by allah i am reluctant to go to the morning prayer i'm reluctant to go to the morning prayer because of so and so person because of so and so imam so he's referring that to an imam so because of because of so and so an uh, so and so imam mimma yutilu bina who makes salah very lengthy for us. 
he makes it too long for us mimma yutilu bina fama ra'aytu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam fi maw'izatin ashadd ghadaban minhu yawma idhin then abu mas'ud he said that i have not seen prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam more furious and more angry than that day he was very furious and angry after upon hearing that complaint from the elderly man who was talking about the imam who makes the salah very lengthy so then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made a statement by saying inna minkum munaffirin there are people amongst you see prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is very uh, he knows how to give da'wah and how to correct people he never said that you know you you or, or, or you person or you so and so person but he said there are people amongst you indirect he doesn't he doesn't like embarrassing anybody even when it comes to correction so he says in namin kum munaffirin there are people amongst you who will drive people away from islam rather than bringing them to islam you will take people away you will drive people away from the from from this religion fa ayyukum ma salla bin nas fal yatajawwaz then he said if any one of you happen to be an imam if any one of you becomes an imam then what do you do is that you need to consider and you need to look at your audience you need to look at the musallin you need to you need to look at your and your uh, look at your worshipers behind you and then he said fa inna fihim ad-dha'if because there are people amongst them who are weak who are on wheelchairs who are on chairs sitting on chairs who cannot stand properly wal kabir elderly people wadal haja and there might be people who are in need meaning zal haja meaning someone might be traveling someone is in, in the market maybe in business place someone may miss his flight someone he may, he may miss miss his train or certain health condition uh, that certain, requires yes uh, co- certain, co- certain health condition i have seen i remember like in cairo sometimes we used to get into some of the masjids and and people used to start reading yasin in, in salatul maghrib mm. and 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 it would go for maybe like 25 30 minutes and i would th- yeah and this is lack of fiqh this is lack of uh, the deep understanding of this religion because this religion it tells us to look at circumstance and situation of people this is th- that's where the fiqh comes from if, if we don't have fiqh then everything will get muddled up and we'll have misinterpretation of this religion now the other side of the argument could be people would love to listen to a beautiful recitation yeah, yeah, yeah. and we know that those now, are now, the now when I, when I that, that, that's a very beautiful point um we have people on the other side on the other hand when it comes to ramadan 30 minutes tarawih 40 yes. minutes tarawih it's like a race it's like a speed train yes, sometimes yes, compared yes. with and we had this in our society uh, and obviously there are reasons for it we have in in many non arab uh, muslim world we have this nature in the, this this practice but alhamdulillah it's changing it's changing everywhere i think even in bangladesh mm. i think i see uh, people are changing a lot things are getting uh, different now uh, we have lots of good hafiz in bangladesh as well those who recite very well and some of the mashallah world champions reciters from from bangladesh so things are getting much better now on one side we have people are racing and competing with one another in tarawih or oh, that message does 40 minutes that message that the 35 not, minutes not only that, i'm sure you have come across we do even see before going to tarawih that which message is the quickest quickest some people have that but on the other hand we find also people make too long mm. and or uh, 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 neglecting the fact that the time is very less the the night is very short mm. people have work next day and i in my opinion i i don't think it's a good idea to also make it too long because knowing the fact that the the summer time in england uh, the nights are very short i think we should make it moderate and we should try and finish as quick as possible with observation of tajweed and ahkam and moderate pace so it has to have a balance balance exactly that's why Again, we are known as ummatul mustafa yeah, in everything yes mm. So um so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said um that if there are elderly weak and people are who in who are in need then we need to make our salah um shorter and obviously not in a way that um that it doesn't become ibadah but moderate salah then also we see um there is a man in the book of imam at-tirmidhi rahimahullah um says that an zarbi radiyallahu anhu he says that i have heard from anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu telling us a story that a man came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was elderly he was quite old now the people who were in the gathering in the presence of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were not budging they were not giving any importance to that man so they were just the way they were sitting they didn't allow him to come to the holy prophet because he was 
he was eager to see and meet the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَبْطَعَ الْقَوْمَ عَنْهُ أَنْ يُوَسِّعُ لَهُ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a very important statement. I think that should be written on the billboards in the country so people can benefit. So he says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا He is not one of us or she is not one of us. مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا He is not one of us or she is not one of us who doesn't be kind and who doesn't, who is not compassionate and merciful with the young ones. You see, he's mentioning about the young ones first, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he's balancing it out. وَيُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا And he is not one of me, or she is not one of me, um, who doesn't show the respect, who, who doesn't uh, show the good mannerism and etiquettes um, towards the elders of the society or the generally people who are old so wa yuqir kabirana and uh, as far as i remember also in another narration so wa ya'rif alimana and who doesn't respect the knowledgeable people especially those who have knowledge of the faith and religion so we can um, see from this beautiful hadith the man came some of the people they didn't budge they didn't give uh, allow him to come to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they didn't welcome him and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said laysa minna man lam yarham saghirana wa yuqir kabirana now also, we discussed last week that you know people, we have elderly people who look at the young ones as they do not know anything. We have this as well, uh, but Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us here both sides. Yarham saghirana wa yuqir kabirana that the elders have to be compassionate and merciful with youngers, and the youngers have to be uh, respectful and they have to have uh, they have to show their etiquettes and mannerism to the elders. Now, I can give one proof from the um, uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in, in the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Abu, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said that um, when we come to give salam, remember we spoke last week about salam, he said there is a, there is a, there is a uh, mannerism of giving salah, a salam, greetings. So he says, يسلم الصغير على الكبير The young one should give salam to the old one. Meaning we can do vice versa, but this is part of adab. This is one of the things that's very much strictly observed. He observed, yes. <laughs> etiquette, yeah. yeah. So it is part of the etiquette that the young ones give salam to the old one. Yusallimu al-saghir ala al-kabir. Then wal maru ala al-qa'id. And a passerby should give salam to the one who's sitting. This is mannerism. So a passerby should give salam to the one who is sitting. Wal qalilu ala al-kathir. And a small group should give salam to the bigger group. Hmm. So if, say, you suppose you have three people, and on the other hand, you've got 10 people sitting. So the small group should give salam to the bigger group. So this is, again, mannerism in terms of uh, greetings, one another, greeting one another. But at the same time, we still can give salam it to can one be another. The other way yeah. around. Because Prophet Sallallahu we see that he gave salam to everyone. Mm. And no one could compete Prophet Sallallahu mm. when he came when he comes to give salam and greet someone. Um, also, to just to balance it out when it comes to elderly people, I mean, but you did rightly mention sometimes they treat the youngsters or the young generation as if like they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Now, how should they approach me, even if they might be right in their context that due to their experience and knowledge and qualification, yep. they might ha see the un they might see because of that, mm -hmm. which the youth or the younger generation might not see it because mm -hmm. they are very still young in their young in para in the young age. Now, how should their delivery style or approach be? I mean, I would say that. Um Everybody knows their parents. Everyone knows their parents, or everyone knows who they're dealing with. Everyone will be different in that, in those, in those situations. Um, so we deal with everyone uh, according to the way they are. Sometimes you can speak to some people openly, honestly, frankly, and they're okay with it. But some people they mind or they get offended when you speak to them oh, uh, directly. So you may have to use like um, alternative methods. So uh, I remember when I used to speak to my father, um, sometimes like when I used to uh, share some of my knowledge. So I used to say, um, and if I saw something, maybe I wasn't quite happy you know, with him when, when he used to do. So I would say like, I saw someone, a scholarly person, he used to do in that way. So I would make like a discussion. And then, and then I would discuss with him, and then in a respectful manner. In a respectful yeah. manner, and I used to see mostly used to get the message, and he used to at the same time he would love me because he knew that I'm respecting him, and I wasn't directly 
uh, you know, uh, addressing him. And I think, again, everyone's would be different. Every, every, every individual would be different on that. So, um, yeah, we have to still maintain and observe the, uh, the etiquettes. And the other aspect that needs to be touched upon is if we know by speaking, if it creates an element of fitna, yeah. within the family or within the yep. society. That's, At that point, what should you do That's very important because sometimes even it we could try be hap- to, some of the things are very actually minor in terms of uh, as far as is concerned, but we want to change overnight and we st- start a big war and we make a revolution and then it actually brings, it causes more harm than the benefit. Even in masjids, sometimes we see like maybe there are some mistakes, there are some traditional things that are taking place from before. But just to change that, we create a huge war amongst the Muslims, worshippers. Then we see there are fights going on. There are uh, quarrelling regularly in our masajids, in community, in, in our communities. So again, the, mash- the the fuqaha of Islam, the jurists of Islam, they say that if you find something in your society and they're permissible, or maybe like they're not haram, then you you can change but with hikmah and, and wisdom. Even something something haram, we're not allowed to um, like change them or uh, uh, harshly or overnight. It takes time. Even when you look at alcohol, how it was prohibited, it took Stages. three different stages until it comes, the, the complete, uh, the absolute decision comes uh, with the prohibition of alcohol so in Islam. O- so in other words, what you're saying, it's basically not always it should be the way, my way. Exactly. No, we no. We should I be mean, able to accommodate well, others. Exa- I mean, Allah wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا If Allah wanted, then He could put everyone of us united. Our hearts, our minds, our, our opinions, everything would be united. But the hikmah of Allah is that we are all different in our own way. So there will be difference of opinions. Um, now, uh, if we do not respect our elders, then uh, it is most likely that we will not be respected and honored with the next generation because this time is coming. Every one of us will become old one day. And, and, and that's just in front of our eyes. And as they not say, in a, there's a saying, what goes around comes, comes around. around. And that's also supported by a famous statement amongst the ulama of Islam. And, and also some say it's a hadith, although the hadith has some, some uh, defects or errors in, in its, its sanad. But it says, كَمَا تَدِينُ tudan. Prophet ﷺ said that the way you do things, you will get the same thing later on. Like what goes around comes around. A similar meaning. كَمَا تَدِينُ tudan. And also Ibn Abi Dunya, a scholar of Islam, he mentioned in his book, Al-Umar wa Shayb. In this famous book, he says that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ أَهَانَ ذَا شَيْبَ لَمْ يَمُتْ حَتَّى يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ يُهِينُ شَيْبَهُ إِذَا شَاب. So he says that if anybody insults, an elderly person, if anyone disrespects or insults someone who have gray hairs, then he will not die, he will not leave this world until he get the same treatment. Unless he is treated in that way, someone would, someone would, be, would appear in his life who will disrespect or maybe insult um, that person. So he will not leave this world. That's a hadith, um, although there are again some issues with the, with the Sanad or chains of narration. But mentioned in the book of Imam Abu, Ibn Abi Dunya in his book called Al Umar wa Shayb. Now, um, uh, how about parents? Because parents obviously are uh, amongst the elderly people. I mean, I'm, I'm very conscious of my time. Mm-hmm. We're coming towards the end of the program mm-hmm. now. With regards to the parents, one of the important aspects that I've touched in the introduction, which mm-hmm. I want you to um, th- f- um, give the answer, if it's possible, to for that and a better, a better understanding of our viewers. Now, we have seen the culture of uh, old age home or things mm-hmm. like that have started within our Muslim society. We know mm-hmm. as Muslim the utmost importance of looking after our parents. Spiritually, we know. In terms of blessings, we know. Now. Is it because of uh, too much business in life that we have left it now towards um, that direction? I think one of the features of uh, our Muslim community is that we have still that um, solidarity. We have Indeed. that, 
that cooperation uh, that can and be the importance of that, that can parents. be viewed like when someone one of us fall ill in a hospital then we see like how many people are coming and visiting every Indeed. day they can't control the visitors but on the other hand when we see someone like who is probably uh, uh, from another faith or maybe like uh, sometimes even from um, from Islam, the faith of Islam we see some who, some of us who are influenced a lot by maybe other cultures, then we see we tend to get less visitors. And uh, as you have mentioned, unfortunately, we are sending our parents to care home. Now, this is something Even alarming. if the percentage might be very, very minimal, no. but we should be very... It's, it's something to be alarming concerned of. Because Muslims are not a people of, of this kind of... Uh, character uh, when we look at the holy quran the quran al kareem it gives the right of parents straight after allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa qada rabbuka alla ta'budu illa iyyahu wa bil walidayn ihsana allah the almighty says allah has decreed he decided for you to not associate any partnership with allah to not make any shirk commit any shirk with allah alla ta'budu to not worship anyone beside allah Allah ta'abudu illa iyyahu wa bil walidayn ihsana. So straight after uh, like uh, talking about shirk, Allah the Almighty says that you, he has commanded you to be good and to have the utmost excellent behavior with the parents. So Quran gives the right of parents straight after Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at this hadith in the books of uh, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he says that a man came to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, man ahaqqu nasi bi husni sahabati. Who, who is that person in this world who has the most right over me? Like who should I, who deserves the most respect and most uh, fine uh, behavior from me? Then he says, Ummuk, your mother. Ummuk. Then says, Thumma man? Qala thumma man? Then whom? Who is next? Then he said, Ummuk, your mother. And then he said, yeah, Thumma man? Ummuk. So three times he said, mother. And the fourth time he said, father. But then again, that doesn't mean the father has less respect. Some people, they think, oh, maybe like mothers are, mother, uh, Professor Asa mentioned mother three times. But obviously other uh, statements uh, suggest that father is also highly respected. But also we have to remember the mother goes through a lot of pain. Yes, That's pain. The and therefore Allah Prophet Allah was given. again compassionate. Mm -hmm. And then also we see there another hadith in the book of Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah. Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anh said a man came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he went to take a bay'ah, to take an oath to go to hijrah, to make hijrah, immigrant migration. And then uh, he said that وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْتُ أَبَوَيَّ but I have left my parents are weeping, crying. I left my parents weeping. Then Prophet Sallallahu said, Irja ilayhima. Go back to them. Return to your parents. Fa'adhikhuma kama abkaitahuma. Make them smile and make them laugh just the way you make them cry. So uh, you can see the importance of parents are highly important when it comes to even hijrah. I mean, subhanAllah, we can end our today's, this, tonight's discussion by this beautiful hadith that you have narrated, the utmost importance of our parents. Par and they're amongst the elders. And amongst the elders in yeah. general, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for to tonight, inshallah. Inshallah, we hope to see you again next week. Bismillah. Inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Jazakallah khair. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. The two key important message. One thing we have to remember, money, name, fame can come and go, but parents once gone will never get them back. So let us cherish the moment that we have. Let us get as much blessing as possible because we know it, the importance in Islam it is. And the second important message that the Sheikh has mentioned that we need to not only respect, be obedient, or also be very um, respectful, not only towards the elder, but especially towards the people who are very knowledgeable in terms of din. Thank you very much for being with us, watching the program. We hope you have found the program educational, informative, and interactive. Inshallah, till we meet, until we meet next Friday. Subhanakallahumma wa hamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tawbi ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Zakallah khair, Shaykh. Thank you very much.